Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. When you are looking for something, even if nobody in your generation has it, pray. You can bring somebody from a generation that have passed to bring that into you. The Bible said in Matthew 17 verse 2, it said as Jesus was praying, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister and he said they stood with him, Moses and Elijah. If you need a dimension that nobody has in Ghana, it's not lost, it's somewhere in the spirit. As you pray, the spirit realm will align its algorithm until that thing finds you. It's only in time that things are lost. It's only in time that things pass. There's no past in the, in the spirit realm. There's no future in the spirit realm. It's a perpetual continuum. Everything is now. And as you begin to pray, a time comes when that realm envelops you. And what was can become what is. What is to come can become what is. The future and the past can meet you in one location. This is why men who pray are ahead of their generation. Because they, they meet where everything congregates. I speak over someone tonight your superior dimension we emerge from this retreat i was praying there was a day i was praying and the lord began to speak to me he said some of the things i want to do with you you are too young he's supposed to meet you in another five years he said but it's your choice if he can't meet you, meet it. Hey. Hey. If you enter that realm, you will see things that you can't even explain with doctrine. I'm telling you, as you begin to press, you can start living from 2030 in 2023. And the things you are touching, the things you are operating, men will look at you and say, how do you come about this thing? You are living the future in the present. That's the reality of the altar. Because the realm is one. You fetch from the future. You spend it in the now. And people cannot understand why the things happening with you are happening with you. It's because when you go to the altar, your goal is not time. It's to travel. It's to travel. And sometimes you travel and you collide with men. And a prophet that lives in the last dispensation begins to advise you. And tell you this level of authority, you don't need to talk much. Because it's not the devil you will fight here. At this level, it's your error that can pull you down nobody taught you you didn't read it anywhere but you met somebody that has ascended that height before and he told you the battles he contended with so you start watching your words and people are saying you are wise you are not wise you heard something you went somewhere and so it is the counsels that you receive that is regulating you you don't know you can pray and you meet daniel in the spirit and he tells you when you are a prophet and you start working with presidents be careful and it begins to tell you the battles that prophets who interact with presidents face you will not find it in the book but it's in the spirit and so the reason you will not allow yourself to be defied is because daniel told you that if you are defied the day the president makes demand of you you will not have authority to answer the reason i overcame is because i chose not to defy myself it is in my purity that I secure powers to bring down Babylon. There are heritages in the spirit that we have not accessed. There are dimensions in God that we have not taught. And the reason is because we are locked into Instagram and TikTok, wasting our time when the realms are inviting us. They say, come up here, come up here. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I heard a sound as of a trumpet. And when I turned, he said the gates of heaven opened and he entered. That was when he saw the things that were immortal. I saw 24 thrones. And upon them were 20 and 4 elders. And they said, every time him that sits upon the throne appears, they fall on their faces. And they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. All things were made for thy pleasure. That was when he knew why creation was designed. That creation is not for your welfare. It's for his pleasure. It's as you please him that your welfare is handled. And so when he learned that secret, he started pleasing God where there was no food. He couldn't die of hunger. He started pleasing God where there was no water. He couldn't die of hunger. Because the moment you please God, you qualify to exist. Those are secrets that are locked in the scrolls of heaven. Only men of prayer can go there. I was in the spirit on the last day. The burdens of revival. The powers of revival. 
are exercised on the altar when a generation begin to pray then they want to see the things bigger than them they want to touch the things that were written so that they become part of the witnesses of those realities you will not live here until you are made a witness if our propensities will be activated there's only one location that will happen it's on the altar it's on the altar ask men who shake their word they will tell you where they live he said blessed is he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high that abides under the shadow of his arm of the almighty he said that is the one that will say of his god is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i trust is my shield and my buckler those are the men that speak as though they are gods on the face of the earth because they are dwelling in the secret place of the most high. they don't visit and go they dwell there they have power on the altar these are the men that break protocols these are the men that shift atmospheres these are the men that open seasons and stair dimensions because they have a throne on the altar we know everything but prayer can we pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute? Zabriga he said they go from strength to strength every one of them in zion that appeared before the presence of god is the times of refreshing comes from the presence of the lord a generation is rising with a dimension of power the world has never seen the bible said the record of the past compared to the future is like a desolate wilderness he said the army of god when he moves he said behind them it's a desolate wilderness but before them is the garden of the lord that means everything that has been done in the past compared to what god will do is a desolate wilderness this is why god is staring a fire on our inside i speak over you you are part of that army that will emerge you are part of that army that will emerge you have heard stories of fathers of old you have heard stories of patriarchs of old what god is about to do we dwarf those dimensions we all know what they have done but the best of god is in the future not in the past and you are part of that story the grace and the dimension that has never been seen may your life manifest them may your generation manifest them in the name of jesus he said for whatsoever things were written aforetime he said they were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope the things that were written were not written just to make us theological students they were written to give us a hope that is beyond anything man can offer they were written to trigger a hunger in our spirit a desire a passion that nothing of earth should be able to quench and tonight I want to show you the journey of the patriarchs so that you will see the things that men of old have handled what men have touched when the scriptures were not yet written in fact the quality of their work and encounters became the body of scriptures i want to show you what men have handled when the Holy Ghost had not yet been given to tabernacle in men. Meanwhile, the Bible said, the glory of this age is Christ in you. The mystery of this age is Christ in you. He said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Now, these are people who didn't have Christ in them. But the things they handled, when you take time to meditate on these things, you will pity your existence. If it's the same heaven we are going to, if it's the same God we are serving, then we have not started living. I will just show you four men that walked through this same earth who didn't have the advantage of the Holy Spirit, who didn't have the advantage of scriptures, yet 
wrought wonders and dimensions that even if you read today, you will need the Holy Ghost to help you to believe. And then you ask yourself, what am I doing here? Why am I here? You will ask yourself again, what is the meaning of existence? Are these men like me calling on the name of the God that I claim to be my God? Some of them worked with God so much that they privatized God for a whole generation. That for aeons, God will be called the God of Abraham. Because that was the only way God could be known in the whole world. If you want to know who God is, you better find out who is Abraham and study his dealings. Because that's the only basis by which you will know God. How can a man be so mighty to have privatized God? That God is known after his walk with a man. And we say we are Christians. All we have are suits, auditoriums. All we have are titles. Is it the same God that these men have we have? No, we don't know what we are doing. A generation must rise that will challenge the status quo. And tell yourself, if God was faithful to people like this, I must see that faithfulness. Because himself said, he is not biased. He doesn't favor one over the other. That means what you are is your choice. It's not because God prioritized one over the other. We have not made the right choices. That's why we are where we are. A generation must rise that will level up with what Abraham, Moses, and the prophets have done and represent it in this generation and much more. Until that generation rises, we don't know why the Holy Ghost came. He said the things that were written at four times, they were written for our learning to teach us how to live because we may have come into this world and we are lost with human pursuits so we don't know how to live he said these things were written for our learning we need to be taught what life is about and how to exist on this side of the divide let me begin with abraham genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 he said, the Lord had said unto Abraham, the first question you ask yourself is, what language does God speak? How was he able to decode the utterances of God? How did he know it was God that was talking to him? And the first thing God told him was not that I will give you a car. He said, get out of your country. Get out of your kindred. Get out of your father's house to the land that I will show you. He has not even given you the name of the land. He said, it is dear, I will bless you. How was Abraham able to believe a spirit that is not known and abandon everything to follow that spirit? And as if that was not enough, this same Abraham walked with this God and it became normal for God to talk to Abraham on every issue of life. When it has to do with children, God is talking to Abraham. When his wife takes a decision and he refuses, God comes to talk to him. As God, the Almighty, became so great that the Almighty was introduced after his walk with Abraham. God was called the friend of Abraham. God, a friend of a man. Who is that man? God introduced as the friend of Abraham. Who is that man? And you up to today, you are still hoping whether God knows you. You are still thinking and hoping that God will talk to you on a matter. You go to the place of prayer, you don't even have assurance that God will speak. Yet a man without the Holy Ghost walked with God so closely that God introduced himself as his friend. Not just as his God, but as his friend. And Abraham knew this God so intimately that his assurance in life was not predicated on his business acumen. His assurance in life was predicated on his understanding of the faithfulness of God. In Genesis chapter 14, Abraham heard that his brother Lot was kidnapped, not by thieves, by four kings, powerful kings. They destroyed a nation and took the spoils of that nation 
and his brother unfortunately was included his nephew and Abraham stood up and carried not an army 318 servants what a nation could not do Abraham believed that his household could do that means the household of Abraham was bigger than Sodom and Gomorrah the household of Abraham was bigger than the four kings put together they tell you that four nations gang up against a nation is that a nation to rise up against they just fought a battle their morale is high but Abraham came out from a gate of mystery he said he took 318 trained servants and hear what Abraham did the Bible said Abraham divided himself among them you know that technology how did he know that one man can be divided into 318 men now the people who translated the Bible later they could not understand that phrase so what they did was that they said Abraham shared his company that's not what the Bible said the Bible said Abraham divided himself because there's a technology Abraham understood in the spirit that is possible for one man to be in many locations so what you call by location today Abraham knew it before the Holy Ghost came Abraham splitted himself and when Abraham splitted himself he knew that those people were in trouble you know why because God had already told him I will make you a great nation so Abraham knew he was a nation so when Abraham took 318 men and splitted himself into them they stopped being men they became 319 nations so the battle was no longer men versus nation the battle was 319 nations against four nations that's why there was no casualty in that war when Abraham came back nobody died and the spoils of war the kings of Sodom offered it to him he said I will not take it I have more than enough if I take even a lecture from you you will go and say you made Abraham rich so the guy was sure of his prosperity as an individual in a strange land when Abraham wanted a burial ground they say we will dash you you are a blessing to us he said don't dash me I don't want you to come tomorrow and hold my children to ransom because I know they will be great what kind of audacity is that meanwhile you you are praying here that God should give you a promotion and because promotion has not come for one year you are frustrated and you are about to fall from Christianity whereas there is another man without scriptures without the Holy Ghost he's so sure of tomorrow that a king wanted to favor him he said I don't need it I don't want you to come and say you are the one who made me rich a man was so sure of tomorrow that they wanted to dash him a property as I came to Ghana now if they tell me there's a piece of land here we want to give you I will need that and say thank you not Abraham they gave him a land they say I don't need it I can pay for it I have the capacity my God is faithful to me why do you find Christian beggars It's because even with the Holy Ghost even with scripture they have not known the faithfulness of God so the guy needs to become part of free medicine in order to win an election and he sells his soul becomes occultic because he wants to win a council opposition what a shame you need to go back and find out what did Abraham know what did Abraham touch that even kings could not be a privilege for him meeting a king was not a privilege for him what did he know and we say we have the Holy Ghost today we are parading king palaces and government houses begging for favor we that carry the Holy Ghost and you'll find many people corrupt their bishopric many people corrupt their ordination just because they need a little favor from somebody who is in governmental power what a shame the Bible I read he didn't say the king will sustain us he said the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder we represent him we carry the government you know why revival needs to come because God needs to strengthen his works in the nation we have allowed the work of the Lord to be blasphemed because we don't know the one that we are serving go to the government house tomorrow see the number of prophets who are there lying and begging it will be a shame to call yourself a Christian with that activity begging and lying even the mayors the governors the prime ministers they know that these people is hunger that want to kill them and they can lie because of food but because we've not had the Abraham Abrahamic encounters where a king offers you the spoil you say keep it my, my promotion does not come from the East 
it does not come from the south it does not come from the north it comes from the lord my god supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus i'm not saying there's anything wrong in you being blessed but i'm saying you will not put your christianity on the line to receive something mundane you have so much audacity in god that you know that your tomorrow is secured he said don't behave like the pagans who pursue everything he says seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness he said all these things that the pagans seek it shall be added unto you but we have a generation that have perverted scripture so a bishop can go and lie against another bishop in order to receive favor before a mayor a mayor that should need down for him to pray for this is why we cry for revival genuine men will rise again let me show you more please sit down when i read the scripture sometimes i weep first from the bankruptcy of god in my life and then secondly from the bankruptcy of god in my generation and i ask myself how was i trained is it the same god that these men work with that i'm working with now look at the life of moses a servant he ran away from egypt out of fear of pharaoh and he encounters god the bible says moses came to the backside of the wilderness even horeb the mountain of god he saw a bush burning that was not consumed his life changed moses returns back to egypt and confronts pharaoh and say let my people go that they may serve me do you know who pharaoh is pharaoh is called the sun god he was worshipped he was dreaded but a man met another god that no other god could match and suddenly pharaoh became a boy to him the reason earthly things are so big to you is because you have not seen him the bible said moses saw him that was invincible he showed up and told pharaoh let my people go and pharaoh will refuse and moses will look at him moses was threatening pharaoh moses will tell him by this time tomorrow so and so will happen and he will leave and he will go to god and speak and god will give him a word he will release it and then you will see frogs the, the night will turn to, to blood. The darkness will be so dark you can feel it. And strange things were happening. Until the last time Moses met Pharaoh, Moses told a king who was called the sun god, you will not see me again. In Pharaoh's territory, he told Pharaoh, you will not see me again. And Pharaoh thought it was a joke. How can a man threaten a king so much? You will not that means it's a privilege for me to appear before you because in exodus 7 verse 1 god told him i've made you a god unto pharaoh so he knew that pharaoh was not even comparing with his god he's bigger than pharaoh because of what he carried there's an understanding of what he carried meanwhile christ in you means nothing to you he said you will not see me again and he left that night pharaoh sent and said please go with all your people go with your cattle go with everything that you want and Moses left. You thought that was the miracle. That's when the miracle began. Moses led over 4 million people out of Egypt without any economic structure, without any military or security structure, without any administrative structure. How will they survive? What will they drink? What will they eat? And the first thing that happened was that in Exodus 13, 20, 21, and 22, the Bible says when they left, the God that sent him didn't leave him behind. He said, the Lord went with them. He went before them as a pillar of fire by night and as a pillar of fire by day. So the whole world was seeing the glory of God naked because of Moses. The whole world. God, they saw the glory, the Shekinah. The whole world saw it. Imagine over 4 million people approaching your country and then you see something like a tornado moving in front of them, leading them. They didn't need a, a compass it was the glory that was leading them when it becomes night it turns to fire and when pharaoh saw it pharaoh thought it was a weather condition when pharaoh began to chase him the bible said the glory departed from before them and went behind them and began to scrubble their wheels so they couldn't move fast moses came before a sea there were no boats no technology of boats that he could cross four million people 
and he turned to God and said, God said, why do you call me? Go forward. And immediately he stretched forth his rod. And the Bible said with the blast of his nostrils, he parted the Red Sea. How can you imagine a sea suddenly divided into two? And one side is standing like a wall of ice. Another one is standing. And they say, walk through it. The guy was not surprised. The guy was not afraid. Walk through it. And they walk through the sea as dry ground. They walk through a sea as dry ground. You thought the miracle had finished. And then suddenly, they got to a place. They needed water. And they started troubling Moses. Even Moses was overwhelmed. How can you be asking for water here? And God said, why are you worried? Talk to the rock, the water will come out. The guy was angry, struck rock, water came out. And the water was bitter. He went back to God. And God said, cut a branch of a tree, throw it inside. The water will become sweet. Is it God the man is communicating with like his friend? Is, that, is it God that a man is talking with as he went every step of the way? And then I see I'm a Christian. I hear God once in three years. When they ask you, when was the last time God spoke to you? You can't even remember. Both when and the instruction, you are forgotten. But another person was talking to God every day. And the water became sweet. You now thought that was the miracle. They now discovered suddenly that their shoes were not growing old. They discovered that their clothes were not becoming weary. A boy of one year, a sander is designed for him. He's 10 years old. The sander grew with the leg. The shirt that he wore 10 years ago is as new as the day it was made. Because the presence that they carried was regulating everything, including their wears. Sander growing, shoes growing, clothes growing with them. And you think that is a miracle? He said there was no feeble among their tribe. Everybody was strong. The only time they fell sick was when they rebelled. And even when they rebelled, Moses knew what to do. The Bible said serpents came into their camp. There were no doctors to help them. And suddenly, Moses prepares a brazen image and puts it up. If you are beaten, look up. How does looking remove toxins from your blood? How does looking remove poison from your body? What is the relationship between looking and poison? That means there was something they knew in glory that we have not touched. Look up. That's all you need to do. A snake bites you, you look up and everything is healed. And you think that is the testimony. Every nation they entered, they conquered it. They didn't have bows. They didn't have arrows. All they had was the glory of God. And they entered the nation, those nations and shared the land. The men ran out and gave them the city. What did they carry? That Moses could command water to become sweet. Moses could, could, could carry so much presence that shoes grew with them. Clothes grew with them. Today, if three people are hungry, we are confused. What did they know about God? That we have not known even with the Holy Spirit. And we brag about church. We brag about title. We brag about the seat we sit in church. When men have touched powers, even Joshua that was Moses' apprentice, the Bible said in Joshua chapter 10 verse 12, that when nations came to fight them, Joshua divided the army and they fought. He discovered that so long as it was day, they were winning. And Joshua came up without consultation. He said, let the sun stand upon the mountains of Ajalo. Who talks to sun? He said, let the moon remain upon the valley of Gibeon. And he said, the sun did not make haste to go down. And he said, in the day that God hearkened to the voice of a man. So God too hears men and obey. Because of intimacy. What did they know that we don't know? Today, if we want to cast out demon, 13 intercessors, we pray in tongues for seven hours. If somebody has headache, we will shout, quote scriptures, talk grammar. At the end of the day, the headache will remain there. We say it's miracle service. The three people that come to testify in order just to honor us. Somebody say pain. I had pain on my neck. I didn't sleep well. I have pain on my back. Meanwhile, even the testimony, they are saying it to encourage us. And you see the whole church trying to encourage man of God. Don't worry, something is happening. No, no. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. If the fathers had so much power, 
that nature nature hope you know that the bible said the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of god nature obeyed them and you know the worst part till today there are people in ghana who are in darkness if they say let it rain now it will rain so the things that are our inheritances darkness have taken them there are people in ghana today that if they want rain to fall at the perimeter of your compound rain will fall there until they say stop and all we have are titles all we have is fight over position you see two choir members keeping malice for six months what happened during the convention i was supposed to sing they didn't let me sing the question is if you sing what will happen you are singing no demon is cast out you are singing nobody is healed you are singing nobody has encounters you are singing nobody is shifting and the whole idea behind singing is to have a good hair and a high heel so that when you sing you move the hair and do voice that we don't know where it's coming from and there's malice for six months because they didn't let me sing the brother bought a new suit he thought he was going to lead the choir ministration but the head of choir decided to say the sister should sing and so he feels his suit is now a waste the shoe he polished is now a waste because coming to the altar to him is to show suit and shoe he doesn't he doesn't feel pity for himself that after singing that song in fact some of the songs we even sing have anointing in them not because anything is in our lives somebody else who sought god trapped a song with an anointing we are singing even that song with anointing nothing is happening because all we came to show is suit and shoe what a generation what a generation and we saw wonders upon wonders every page of scripture speaks about the supernatural dimensions of god from one generation to another generation and to cap it all up jesus showed up as the ultimate prophet as the son of god as the savior of the world and everything they did jesus showed us the zenith so why elijah and moses parted the river when jesus came he said the river does not need to be parted you don't need a dry ground to walk and jesus walked on the water why moses needed manna to come from heaven jesus didn't need manna what do you have five loaves two fish bring it here thank you father take give them and the bread multiplied so if you have bread it can't finish until you tell it to finish bread does not finish because you ate bread finished because you allow it he went to a wedding they said the wine is finished he said fill the empty jars you don't need to ferment any sugar to get wine fill the jars they fill the jars no prayer take go and give the governor of the feast even the water had enough intelligence that now i need to be wine and you clap your hands you say yes it's because he's the son of god and he now made a statement john 14 verse 12 he said the works that i do which is greater than what every prophet did he said the works that i do he said shall you do also he said and greater works we have not even begun to do what the prophets did <laughs> let alone doing what jesus did before greater works and we think church service is to add drama we think church service is to have music concert we should weep in our services because the power of god is no more this is why we cry for revival habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2 it said oh god revive thy works in the midst of the years the works needs to be revived because even what moses did is greater than what we have done what elijah did is greater than what we have done and jesus has given us a standard he didn't tell us to do what elijah did he didn't tell us to do what moses did he didn't even tell us to do what the greatest prophet among the prophets did he said the least you should do is what i have done but i expect you to do greater 
How can we say we are Christians and nothing is happening? You know the way he said Christians should be identified? He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. You know Christians by signs, not by talking. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name shall they cast out devils. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick. The sick shall recover. If they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall by no means hurt them. When they step upon serpents and scorpions, they shall not be hurt. A Christian is a sign to a generation. And the reason you are a sign is because of the works that follow you. He didn't say this sign shall follow apostles. He didn't say this sign shall follow prophets. He, said this, he didn't say this sign shall follow evangelists. He said this sign shall follow them that believe. The reason you came for this conference is because you have seen that living a natural life is a curse. And you are telling yourself, I will not depart until something supernatural rests on me. Ah. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.